Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of La Mama's Live Talks. Today is take 16 and we have four of La Mama's resident artists from this season here to talk to you about their work and what they've been doing uh, in this breaking it out year during the pandemic, continuing to make work and create art here at La Mama. Today we have uh, the four artists are Shauna Davis, Yoshiko Chuma, Muriel Borst Tarrant and Jaghetto, and we're so excited to have them today. Just a reminder for you all, if you're watching here on Facebook, you can ask any questions of our resident artists at any time, and we will be very happy to ask them your questions for you to get a great answer. Without further ado, I'm going to start with, we have a one video from Shauna Davis, and uh, let's go ahead and roll that. Excellent. And here we are with Shauna. Welcome, Shauna. Hi, Ryan. Thanks for having me. Happy to be back talking with you. Yeah, just I uh, really love the video that you just showed us. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Thank you. So this was a teaser to the film that I'm developing called Black Eco. Um, it will be about a 10 minute long um, short dance film based around Afrofuturism. Um, and as you see behind me, um, I was wearing one of those flower heads um, and that will be one of the worlds that we dive into. The whole, um, the concept is that we see this woman with this sculptural hair and we dive into four worlds that are within her. And one of them will be the flower head world. Wow, and they're gorgeous. Did you make those yourself or how did those come about? Oh, I actually have a wonderful friend, collaborator, multidisciplinary artist named Sarah Butler, um, and she actually sculpted um, the flower heads. Um, and you can see they're, they're pretty sturdy and they allow movement in, in such a beautiful way. And I thought that I wanted to, along with the Afrofuturism theme, I wanted to um, represent seeds and growing and just fantasy. Um, on black bodies and with black bodies. Yeah, they're gorgeous. I'm glad that you called them sculpture. I think that's like the perfect world for what those are. Um, I'd be so interested to hear a little bit about how you came to be a resident artist at La Mama, because um, I believe you're calling from LA and uh, how did you uh, get connected with us? Yes, very sunny LA. So about a year, actually not a year ago, a year and a half ago, I did a project with Chris Williams and Lauda Perez. And um, in LA, we worked with Culture Hub. Um, and that was another multidisciplinary performance with dance and film called I Ain't Got No Spare. Um, and through that connection, I started doing a few of the live stream shows um, last summer. And here I am now. Excellent. We love Culture Hub. Um, yeah. And so you consider yourself to be a dancer, a choreographer. Can you tell us a little bit about what your trajectory is as an artist? Yeah, so I've been dancing for forever. <laughs> and um, I think during this pandemic, I've also been creating for forever. Um, but when I moved to LA, that kind of took a back seat and I was just in like, go, go, go mode. I want to perform. I want to do um, the commercial dance route and the pandemic gave me a moment to pause and think about the work that I actually want to create um, and it exists beyond the like dance for dance sake world I feel like I want to tie in my history I want to tie in um, topics that are interesting I want to tie in dance theater um, yeah so right now my trajectory is being a director, dancer, choreographer, producer, all of those things. 
Amazing. And was it, would you say it was difficult for you to make the transition into this new virtual space where we're all sort of performing and congregating? Or have you learned anything new from performing in these virtual shows? Um, I'll say that I, I definitely miss the live performances, but it just felt so out of necessity for me to just make a quick transition and start developing work. Um, so no, I, I, I haven't found it too difficult um, as far as like creating goes. Um, and then what have I learned? I mean, I've learned a lot of tech things. I've learned a lot about <laughs> Zoom and I'm sure there's more to come. I feel like, um, yeah, I, this is the first time that I'm developing a film and I'm just learning so much about what goes into that process and like how to really um, spearhead a highly collaborative project um, in a way that's definitely very, very new to me. And I would love to hear you sort of define what Black Futurism means to you since your upcoming performance is going to deal with that. And who are some of your inspirations from like the legacy of Black Futurism? Yeah, so in June, when, um, when George Floyd was murdered and then the um, Black Lives Matter um, movement really picked up, I honestly felt so stuck and immobile and just in a dark place. And I was seeking some kind of lightness. I was seeking some kind of joy. And I found Octavia Butler and I started reading her um, Afrofuturism books. And I started listening to like Detroit Techno and Sun Ra and these artists who, Ellen Gallagher is another one. Um, these artists who tap into another realm of reality. And for me, that was just like, it was everything to me. I was like, I need, I need to be able to create this within the dance vocabulary. And I, I just want to share that, um, that joy and that fantasy that, um, yeah, that I, I don't see so often. So. That's yeah. lovely. Um, and I was wondering sort of what you just said, when the pandemic hit, I felt a lot of artists were having this conversation or even institutions of, should we even be making work right now, right? Should we be doing less? Should we be doing more? How should we continue? Um, did you sort of have that conversation with yourself? Um, not in terms of making work. I think I had the opposite experience. I, I've been in the role where, as a dancer, where I'm told where to show up and what moves to do and what count I need to step on. And I'm a part of someone else's vision. And this, um, I felt like I needed to speak. I felt like I needed to muster up the energy and the, um, the words and the movement to, to start my sharing journey again. Excellent. And last thing I'll ask you is, could you just tell us a little bit more about um, what is to come in your residency and like, how can people watch it? When can they watch it? Uh, what can they expect? Yeah. So also through La Mama on the 20th, I'll be doing a, um, a performance um, through Cafe La Mama. So you'll see a little snippet there. And then June 10th and 11th, um, Black Eco will stream um, through La Mama, more information to come. Um, yeah, it'll stream. It's on Kickstarter now. I just launched it a few days ago. Um, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Um, well, thank you so much. Please, uh, just, uh, chill for a second and you can turn off your camera and microphone and we'll come back to you at the end with all the other artists. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you, Shauna. Um, and next what we're going to, we're going to see a video from, uh, Yoshiko Chuma, one of our other resident artists, if you'd like to roll that. Yes, um, but what are we, what are we selling is, is the question in the first. So it's like a experiment, like right. processing, pro processing, right? So like, we don't know what's going to hit. It's like everything is, could be possible. So we just put whatever we have to like start that, yeah. what, yeah. correct? Okay. 
So, I mean, that sounds good. Maybe maybe each person can, can come up with one idea that they want to sell and we can sell them all. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. I think it may be... It's the same thing with, with like digital art. You're, you're, you can duplicate it, yeah, for sure. But we minted a, a coin or whatever, a currency right. with that. So right. we're selling that currency. We're not selling the art, actually. Okay. Oh. She was maybe gonna play music, which is now not happening. So we could also just time it. Or what do you think, Peter? Yeah, time. I mean, that's the uh, timing is good for me. Okay, how? When should we cut it off? Uh, minutes, since we're in silence. What did you say? Two minutes. Two and a half. Two and a half. Okay. I wrote that there for you, Ginger. Thanks so much. Yeah. And then it goes into advertisement and then Peter Player trailer. And then I will read Peter's bio. And Peter, I have your updated give bio. Me the, give me the numbers for the two videos. The numbers are video nine and video 10. No, the minutes. One minute, 44 seconds. And then 55 seconds not i will just read your bio you know what i mean i'll do it very slowly so yeah um and then uh peter's gonna cue you in ginger um by saying bring my first video and that's qn video 11 mm -hmm. and then it's bells it's what it's bells bells <laughs>
All right, we're back here with Yoshiko Chuma of Yoshiko Chuma in the School of Hard Knocks. Hello, how are you, Yoshiko? I'm okay. Good. Um, so what we just saw, I believe, because I've collaborated with you on these performances, you've been working a lot this year, both with a 24-hour performance that happened in La Mama's Ellen Stewart Theater, and you've also been working with many of your international collaborators on Zoom. Can you tell us a little bit more about what that experience has been like? Well, mid of the 1980, maybe about two, maybe 10 years, if you say decade, it's one each 10 years, that 1980. 2000, now 2020, sort of, I'm kind of a tracing each other. Um, so your question is uh, what kind of my experience? I'm sure you didn't plan for this year to be performances like this, right? Has it been different for you? The English uh, kind of a vocabulary you plan your life, you plan the project. But as you know, you are born America. It's an expression that school of hard knocks. You know, you go to plan is that you are talking about a future plan. And then you are talking about a, a previous experience you have. So it's kind of, I you know, past, present, the future is a kind of a triangle, you know, three vectors are coming in. So I have to find it the, to answer to you, what is a, your, my experience? And also what was uh, different uh, or I didn't plan uh, before anything. Um, mm, I cannot find it the uh, very simple sentence. Sometimes everything and then maybe nothing. That's the kind of my answer. But if I say my experience for performing 24 hours was tracing 1986, the place used to be called performing space, PS122. So I had a 24 hours performance. So it's kind of a tracing. Then the, I know what is a 24 hours mean and what I have to be prepared, but it's a big different. I got much older. So I wasn't really sure I could keep up in 24 hours. So that is a kind of a, my experience. Yeah, it was very impressive. You were performing for like 24 hours straight. Um, I saw the whole thing. <laughs> um, I'm also wondering, uh, how does it feel not traveling so much this year? Because you're known for crossing borders and collaborating with artists all around the world. So has that been, um, how has that felt for you this year? Well, Maybe that was a new experience, uh, you know, over the 44 years in New York life. I landed to Manhattan 1976. So that is a very interesting. Um, this one year, uh, yes, I'm cooking every day. So it's a cooking became also you know, when you have to go to setting up and call pre-production. And then the actually cooking is a production. And after eating is a very short time and I have to clean up. So pre-production, production, post-production, pre-production, production, post-production, pre-production, production, post-production. Post post so one day I have a kind of a 
one kind of a line of the time. And that is almost kind of a very performable and it's a very challenging. So yes. that is the, it kind of a one of the, my theater, if I say, in my house. And are you looking forward to performing in the future at La Mama with audiences using some of the techniques that you've developed this year? Yes. And then we, or I always name it the production. So I have been, the, it's a program School of Hasnokto TV is Saturday morning live. And then Zuma dead, they were dead to Zuma, something like that. So then we started doing Saturday night live, Saturday night at 11 p.m. That is a channel 3.14. So yes, soon you might be surprised to go to coming up live, live, and the um, La Mama, La Mama, wow, I have known since 1976. And if I say thank you to all the people I met, La Mama, 44 years, and also fantastic team, culture hub, that 24 hours we have three cameras and then that was almost a tipping utopia, it's a happen. I didn't plan. I didn't plan to make it happen. It's a time and time, you know, to go into happening. And that is a kind of a moment to, is a just a incredible pleasure. Thank you so much for saying that. And just to let everyone know um, what Yoshiko was saying that Saturday morning live and a few other performances will also be coming up this April that she'll be doing and they're all online events. And um, thank you, Yoshiko. You can go ahead and turn off your camera and your microphone and uh, chill for a little bit. And we'll bring you back at the end to talk to everyone else. Oh, the, the, I have a one of the video. I, the, the part, it's a time up now. Yeah, oh, we're just okay. for time. So then they're fine. Okay. All right. Thank you, Yoshiko. Welcome. Thank you very much. And now we're going to bring out uh, Jigeto, also known as Tarish Pipkins. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining Hello. us. Where are you calling in from? I am in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Peace world. How you doing? Thanks for tuning in. And it's an honor to be here with you, Ryan. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure. Please tell us a little bit about uh, what we're seeing here in your studio. Uh, this is my mini me. Let me pull this chair back, give you a close up. Uh, there's a, a story behind these shoes. These are actual uh, miniature models of Air Jordans. Uh, these were from a clothing store that a, a first cousin of mine in Washington, D.C. Um, called Core. These are actually keychains. And um, he flew me up there to uh, do a mural in, in one of his stores. He, he had four clothing stores. He opened his fourth one, you know, and that's my cousin. I'm proud of him. So he flew me up and I uh, painted his walls for him. I seen these and it's one of his display cases. I said, dude, I have to have those shoes. So he gave them to me and I decided to build a miniature puppet of myself. And this is the piece that I'm doing for, um, La Mama. It's a auto by puppetry of Jigetto, which is a um, st story of my life told through puppetry and um, animation. Because I'm um, decided to uh, approach it through uh, poetry and storytelling. So I'm going to just tell the story about my art career and not the, like, the personal side of it, which, you know, that'll spill into it. But just wanted to focus on the art because i uh, I went through several phases of my art career before it, it led up to puppetry. I'm as a little kid, I always drew and uh, created things with my hands. And then as a teenager, hip hop culture influenced me to do, uh, you know, dancing and uh, spoken word, rapping. I'm also an MC. I used to do graffiti that led to murals. The murals led to live performance painting, 
I ended up being with a uh, artist collective doing all those things. Ended up building a puppet for a open mic when I was hosting an open mic because when I was heavy into live painting of, of puppetry, I mean, poetry. So, and that led to me moving from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to North Carolina, where I jumped right in and now I'm a full fledged puppeteer for now. That's an amazing interdisciplinary <laughs> year, uh, like career, you know what I mean? That's wild. Um, and would you say, um, like what kind of joy do you get from mixing all of those different mediums that you have experience in? Like, what can we expect from your show that's coming up? Just a, a heck of a story, <laughs> you know, because, <laughs> you know, once I've, I've talked to people, especially personally, they say, well, it's time to tell your story. You've had a, a time in your life now. And then I've heard this from several people. So, you know what, but let me go ahead and listen. Me being the public servant I am, let me give the people what they want. So definitely, oh, as I was also a, a a professional barber for over twenty years too. Only my uh, Pittsburgh family knows that. But I used to do really uh, elaborate designs. It was all art. I used to do like real uh, cool designs and stuff, and in, in the back of people's head and signs and you know fancy parts and stuff. That was my claim to fame in high school. Wow, you do it all. I'm, uh, and yeah. how did you come to get connected to La Mama? I'm very interested because you've had like such a long career um, and you've been so many places. Yeah, uh, director Denise, she uh, sent me an email one day. It was like, I've been watching you and would you like to join us? And I was just like, whoa, because I've always, you know, heard and been following La Mama and for me to be invited into the family. I'm just so like honored and happy and elated and giddy all at the same time it's just a you know a beautiful experience your mom is just a legend in one of the the biggest cities on the planet and i'm just so proud to you know be part of this winning family well oh, that's so sweet of you to say thank you it's such a pleasure yeah. um and i was wondering too do you collaborate with other artists when you're doing your puppetry or um how do you like to perform do you usually do solo shows uh with other puppeteers or what do you like to do well uh, my passion right now is just working with my son you know because uh he's seen one of my shows when he was two years old it was a show called love and robots and he was fixated on the performance like it was a marvel movie like two years old just fixated so for for me to watch him grow up in puppetry that's all he knows and to just take it on just as much as even more so than me at times that's my favorite part. Uh, of course, I've collaborated with other uh, musicians and artists, visual artists. I, I love collaborating with other artists because it, it brings out, you know, it, it pulls me out of my comfort zone at times and challenges me to, challenges me to do different uh, mediums. Yeah. I'm, I'm writing my butt off now, which I never planned on, but, you know, I'm writing for a short film through uh, Handmade Puppet Dreams. I'm writing this which is getting really involved because I'm trying to pick and choose what stories to tell, so many of them. So it's like, yeah. Yeah. And so what I've seen too yeah. is you sort of perform for like a wide audience, like the range of the stuff that you talk about in your performances could be for like very young audiences or families or really anyone. Um, and that's what I've really appreciated about working at La Mama, you know, going back to what you said about the legacy of puppetry here is the power of what puppetry can do and the stories that it can tell. You know, I love watching an audience when they see the power of what it can do or, or they're, they're surprised yeah. by seeing puppetry, you know? Yeah, it's, it's the, the, the ignorance of puppetry, just the, the, the lack of information and knowledge that the average person has on puppetry blows my mind. You know, I mean, from big Hollywood productions down to like uh, elementary school performance, they ask the craziest questions and you're like you're every gig is like you're educating people <laughs> what puppetry is because you know of course you go to children's education but people don't know there is a deep dark rabbit hole of puppetry that once you jot dive in it's like whoa like where am i going i, I wanted to be in that 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 rabbit hole of puppetry which, to show people something they've never seen uh perform with puppets before I mean, there's nothing yeah. to be done, but hopefully I can do something with a puppet that hasn't been done yet. I love to go back to what you said about like the look in your son's eyes when he was amazed by the show that you were performing, because that's what does it for me, too, is when I look at the audience 
And like, whether it's kids or adults, they realize like, oh, this is something I've never seen before. Like I never would have even imagined. Yeah. Yes, I, I love uh, performing for younger uh, children in schools because they've really never seen anything like it before. And it's just the, the expression, the, the screams and yells, the body language, uh, the, you know, the teachers are trying to calm them down. I have to tell them like, look, they've never seen anything this crazy. Just give them five minutes to just let it out. And I'll, I'll reel them back in before I send them back to class. But That's great. You know, yeah. They, they just expect <laughs> a teacher to loves to hear that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah I'll, I'll own it for five. I'll brew because I have um, background in special education teaching as well. So I've, I've worked with children with special needs. So to me, doing, having that background and then having crowd control as an MC and a rapper, it's, it's just like this, my whole life led up to this. Amazing. And I, mean, I was, Oh, yeah. go ahead. I guess so for me to be able to educate, and now it's more than education. I'm more, uh, I'm approaching my activism through the puppetry, which I thought would never happen, which after I just got pulled into it, which I've always been an activist. So it's, it's, it's a perfect fit for me. Incredible. I think that definitely this year has really pushed artists to think about how they can use their skills and their artistic practice to combine that with the goals of their own activism as well. So, um, and I was going to say, we're going to um, uh, wrap up with you for now. And I wanted to remind everyone that the show that uh, Jigetto is talking about, you can currently make reservations for that on La Mama's website, lamama.org, um, as well as I believe you're performing in Jumpstart, which is coming up later this yeah. month. So Please. lots of opportunities to see all the yeah. great stuff that Jigetto is doing. Yeah. So um, thank you so much. You can go ahead and turn off your camera and your microphone, and awesome. we're going to bring you back at the end. All right. Thanks. And now, last but not least, uh, we're going to welcome Muriel Bors Tarrant. Uh, you can turn on your camera and microphone. Hello. How are Lovely you? to see you. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from New Jersey. Excellent. I'm from Arlington. It's not very sexy, but. <laughs> it's so good to see you. Um, so we were lucky enough to uh, have you do Reflections of uh, Native Voices, which was a festival featuring like a broad range of um, Indigenous and Native artists earlier in January. Could you tell me a little bit just about yourself and about that festival? Um, I'd love to hear more. Uh, well, I'm a playwright and um, director, producer, you know, and um, I also, you know, performance artist, uh, well, not performance artist, I'm an actress and comedian, as you know. And so a lot of things that I do is centered around that, but I want, I did this festival, Reflections of Native Voices with me and my husband two years ago. And the idea was behind that was how do we center everything around that it's not only us who are doing things in New York City, but how do we show the reflection of a thriving living culture in New York City, right? That we're not here in the past and we're a community that's here. And so that was the idea. And also there are big influences I had from other um, like writers, you know, um, you know, uh, Mor Morris, Tony Morris is one of the people who kind of, uh, when I was th thinking about her and Maya Angelou, I was thinking about how they promoted their, they promoted other people's work and in not feeling it was taken away from them. And even though they have other people's work and they've edited it and they help people write it, they still have had careers with writing. So that's kind of how I approached it is that, yes, we put our, a lot of our ensemble and our ensembles work in things and things that are new. But I also want to promote directors, young emerging, not, not youth directors, but emerging directors. And how do we teach that on its feet? Because I was looking at the statistics um, about it, yeah, I would, that was again two years ago, looking at the statistics on how many native writers there was, and it was playwrights, then they, and then they got to performers, and then they, and the directors were like five. And you look at that statistic and you say, this is where we're lacking, right? This is where we're lacking in, you know, it, in everything, 
right? We really need to start to train actor, um, train directors who want to direct. And sometimes people don't know how to start to direct, right? So I had a very great opportunity because I was mentored by my mother, you know, M Miriam Miguel, Spider-Woman Theater. And, you know, and then John Frazier um, from LIU. And those were people who really mentored me and I really shadowed them and tried to figure out how, and then I had questions. So when I did my own piece, I didn't go through a directing theater program. I went to a theater program, but I had those opportunities to work with other directors and just watch how other directors work. And so I wanted to share those same and how do you go into things, you know? Um, and I've watched a lot of times um, Native directors not able to make the jump or saying to themselves, well, you know, they don't have the right language. They don't know how to talk to stage managers. Like, you know, there are things like that. And I'm very interested in how we can, how my organization, Safe Harbors New York City, can promote that, can promote yeah. the emerging, um, the emerging artists. You know, I think that I saw your festival and I think that, and I've seen it for multiple years. And I think that you've definitely accomplished that, you know, like, I mean, I loved listening into the panels because I feel that, you know, many arts institutions have had panels uh, with indigenous artists and that has been a conversation or not even indigenous artists, but other like underrepresented uh, voices in the community. And they've said like, sometimes it feels like it's us or them, right? And your festival has really made a point of being like, no, we can all lift each other up together. And that came about when the artists were speaking on the panels with you at the end of the festival, I think 100%. And me watching their work over the years and some people I've worked with, people I, you know, so this, to do it virtually was a great opportunity too, because I was able to take people's work that I didn't have to bring here and put up and things like that. So I could showcase their work in New York City, you know. And it's I, sort of like a double-edged sword, right? Because some people don't like that there's not the live audience, but also the access changes because then you're reaching out to people um, in different places and having those conversations, so. And we were able to not only reach um, like uh, rural areas and other cities, but we got to um, reach other reservations and other native centers and, you know, where they were very encouraged. And I kind of, you know, especially during COVID time, I was thinking, well, what could I do? What, what could I do? And you, you see some things about like jazz, for example, and you watch them during war times that they just played for the troops. And that's kind of what it feels like my job is. And at one point, that was like how I felt. It was like, well, I have to do something. And this is the way I know how to do it, to make people feel good. And I try to do comedies because I just can't take the, you know, I, I, I just can't take the bedraggledness no more. So I'm biting <laughs> satire too. I mean, you've written satire, don't feed the Indians. And you know, you're like, I, th I, that's what one thing I love most about you. And whenever you have a show at La Mama is that your humor is like all over the building. You know what I mean? I can always hear you laugh and <laughs> Well, yes, I mean, so I mean, if we don't have, you know, it's either you're laughing or crying and I choose to laugh, really, you know, and to me, it's the, you know, it's what we're going through, what the world's going through, what my community's going through, what my family's going through is very sad, right? But how do we laugh about it eventually, you know, I mean, and I feel that we have to do something. And you've been writing your own work, like one of your own pieces that you wrote was uh, featured in the festival. Could you talk a little bit more about it? Yes, TP Tales um, from the Stoop is the is um, a one person show that I wrote in collaboration. Um, well, I developed at Dartmouth with um, New York Theater Workshop, and then I've been doing a little like adding on to it and working with Morgan Janice, and we were really trying to flesh it out. And the original was directed by my husband. And I had to figure out how to rewrite that in a way. Um, and how do I do that? So I did know they want to be a lot of video. So what I did was I applied for a very small um, N um, NPN fellow for TP Tales. And what I did was I, it was about, it was about document, documenting your work. 
So not only did I documentate the work, I also have the second, the third layer. So when I can do it, so it will be, so I have the writing the first year and I do things like that in fours. Like I start a project, like I do it. Like I start with the idea. I start with the, the writing. I start, then I start getting on my feet. Then we start to, you know, the little by little until the fourth time is pulling it all together. Excellent. I love that. Um, real quick, I would love to just sort of uh, bring all of the artists out so that we can have a discussion. Um, so if everyone wants to turn on your camera and your microphone, I'm excited to sort of uh, chat with everyone since you're all the Mama's resident artists this season about um, what's it like to meet each other. And <laughs> is there anything interesting that you saw from, um, I love it all because you're also you're all four just very different artists with very different practices, but it was kind of enjoyable to, to see you all meet each other. <laughs> yeah, I'm just so excited that um, I'm part of this eclectic group and I hope to be like Yoshiko and be with La Mama or collaborating with La Mama for 40 years. That's my new goal. Do I say, group and everyone you know, I mean, each one of the speech is a impress uh, very impressed, uh, fascinated, each one of you know what you want. And then I start to think about, you know, well, I don't say to my age, but then I was a, <laughs> never, I was a your age. No, I didn't know anything, you know, basically, you know, I mean, well, Ryan was a very kind and I'm going to all over the world, but I just want to, uh, I, I want to people we do know I don't go with, with the Europe, you know, I go into Palestine, I'm going to, you know, Venezuela, I go into, you know, recently, you know, maybe, you know, maybe Palestine and the whole of this. So my, 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 uh, what he say, world trip, no, mine are like very, my uh, secret, you know, journey, I save my money and I take, you know, flight. Yeah, my age, you know, I can pay thousand dollars to go to fly, but for you might be very expensive. So then I get to there and then I just, uh, you know, experience. And then also, you know, I did uh, in the Venezuela, I did uh, go into with the circus people and I perform five minutes and I love it. I love, you know, I mean, now you call outreach program, but I don't call. But three of you, just incredible. I want to know what you do more. And the lion is a cool. I mean, he 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 has a great conversation. It's yeah. easy. It's easy when people are interesting. So you do all the work for me. <laughs> um, yeah, I was gonna say too, um, Muriel. Going back to also your festival, I was very. Um, I was very like, moved by um, what your daughter Josephine had to say at the end when she was sort of pushing the shows and stuff, because um, talking about how this is such an eclectic group of people who are all sort of working at the same theater, but she was like, there's something for everyone, you know, like she was like, there's queer native performers, like there's performers talking about themselves. They're dealing with like myths of their tribe or of their people. They're talking about modern day things. They're mixing things all together. Some of it is experimental, some of it's comedy, some of it, you know, it's like, um, I feel like sometimes those conversations aren't had, right? Like they'll be like, oh, well, here's the one experimental thing or here's the one indigenous thing, like bravo to us, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, like, you know, that's the, you know, that's the thing that was great about the festival is that we were able to take all these different, these different types of almost genres of theater, right? And say, and it was, and it really started with, hey, what are you doing? You want to do the festival? Okay, sure. Well, <laughs> I, have, I have this opportunity. You want to do it? Oh, yeah. Do you have anything recorded? No. Well, let's record it, uh, record it and film it and send it to me. Okay, I'll do that right away. I mean, it was like that fast. We had to think that fast on our feet. And it was really like writing television, you know, but I've always, you know, I was brought up that way. You know, I, I, I the work doesn't come to you. You got to go to the work, right? And if you have something to say, say it as loud as you can. And I, I'm very, what's important to me is that people know that Native people come in all these different shapes and sizes and incomes and 
textures, you know, and, you know, we don't come one way, right? But I have been thinking, I don't want to do any more historicals. And I had on my website in the very beginning when I was taking some readings in, I was like, uh, we don't take anything, uh, we don't take historicals. That means Pocahontas and her friends. But <laughs> And well, so you've been doing autobiographical stuff. And I know, Jigetto, you've also been doing autobiographical work recently. And was it for the two of you was, um, and also Yoshiko, you've been covering like the legacy of your work. Is there something about this moment no, no, that no, makes- not, not the legacy, no, not legacy. <laughs> okay, euphoria, wrong word. You for you, you know, Korean, American English, you know, that, that, that. But I listen each one. No, I don't use legacy. I don't use collaboration. I don't use any of the pre-existence, you know, vocabulary. That's a making very limited. But it talks about your life, and I really liked that. Was that I feel like I learned a lot about you and your life through your work. Nice to go to very, but you know, one thing is you know, going back. Yes, kind of a biographical. It's it very you know move today, and Mirel say, you know, oh maybe now it's a kind of a dark time. The comedy, you say comedy will be made. Yes, it's always maybe under the war, second the war. And then, you know, when I was a Palestine, you know, Ramallah, I laugh all the time, all the time. And then in the sometimes, the some other world, they are too, they don't know how they can have a fun, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I'm just saying, that was a very beautiful, you know, word you say, you know, oh, maybe the comedy, you know, comedy, but comedy is a very deep. Yes, that's right. Yes, it is. And, and that's what people don't understand is like comedy is the opposite of truth. Like if I'm telling jokes about how I have a big nose and how how terrible and joking about it and how I was called hawk nose and cockatoo and everything. And then the punchline is I was so glad when Al <laughs> Atlantic Avenue, when the um, Middle Eastern kids came in, they had someone else to terrorize. Right, always get some, but that's like, but that's about racism, right? That's really about racism and lateral violence. If you think about it, right? Because it's about that one thing that everyone's picking on you. Oh, now all the white kids can pick on somebody. <laughs> they can right, and <laughs> us versus them mentality, which I think is a conversation that a lot of people are doing with their comedy and their art right now about like what happens, like how do we balance also all of these different conversations, right? How do we make room for everyone? There definitely is space, whether it be through performers or activists. Um, but I wanted to go back to, is there something else that made, for instance, Jigetto, you want to write an autobiographical piece in this time, like in this like very historical moment? I mean, as, as, as I approach it through comedy as well, because I think when you, to master comedy is to make someone laugh at something that's not funny. Mm -hmm. I think once you can do that and open them up to thinking about it through laughter, I think it's it's next level. It's it, it surpasses comedy. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I'm people tell me I'm a funny guy. I tried stand up, but it was a, it was not funny. <laughs> like, I'm like I'm, I'm cookout funny. You know what I mean? Like around a dinner table funny. I tried to get on stage. It did not work. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I respect. I love and respect stand up like to the utmost. But yeah. I, I, um, I yeah, asked yeah. the biograph. So say, if somebody like you write a biograph, and then if you are 20 years old, it's a very easy to write. 30 years old, it's still easy. 40 years old, easy. But then the lion ask, oh, you know, you are like, and they're going to like, it's too many. And then yeah. I cannot to write English or write in Japanese. So, I mean, if uh, three of you, you can help me with my biography. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. the teams of three and the lion, four of you, you are just incredible writing and going to right. very fast. Yeah, so I'm trying to use less words and more uh, imagery and puppetry because yeah. I'm tired of writing. <laughs> I just want to show things because, you know, I've, because I'm, I guess I'll be narrating it, but even I want to use very little narration just to get straight to the point mm -hmm. and keep it short and, you know, just keep it going, keep the interest going. 
I don't want this to get. I don't want to slow down. I want to keep a fast pace storyline mm -hmm. of you know, and it's it's hard writing about myself because I'm not like a braggadocious person. It's always the person with me. I'm like, yeah, you know, I dab in a couple. Of Are you kidding me? He did this and that. So I hang around hype people who we hype each other up, but. My friends are the same way. You know, I have an awesome friend who'll do something. People are like, yeah, I do. I'm like, are you kidding me? You're like the best so-and-so I've ever seen. So I surround myself with people who argue about who's the better artist. You're like, no, you are. Like, no, you are. Like, that's that's the circle I like to be in. I Absolutely. I like <laughs> China. Your heart was a very, very, I mean, beautiful images and then a beautiful, beautiful, you know, edited and the very, very impress and then thank you so i have to credit my um my friend sarah for that but similarly to jigetto i feel like i've been i've been writing so much <laughs> I've, been, <laughs> I've been planning so much i've been dreaming so much so um like i'm also craving and next week i'm gonna start filming and working with more of the dancers and i'm so craving to be like in the space ready to go creating because um yeah it thank you for talking about the editing that was my first time like working with an editor oh, man. <laughs> Um, you realize that's a skill all on its own, yeah. that's an art all on its own, right? <laughs> it's a whole, it's a side gig. A whole side gig. You know what I did the other day? I was, a, I, I rebuilt one of my uh, puppets as a cellist. I was so missing crowds that I took my speaker and I went up downtown <laughs> Chapel Hill and I set up and just performed out in public. Mm. Like I just had to, had that, I had that, I had to have that interaction because I, I miss it. That's bubbling for me because yeah. I'm super stoked. I'm bringing in like so many great creatives. Um, my friend Chris Williams created the music for it too. So everything in that video was original. Um, but yeah, it, it's almost time for me to go to downtown LA and um, have a yeah. live performance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very strange to do a, a virtual festival. I'll tell you that right now. Because yeah. like, you don't know, everyone started having opening night dinners. It was like, we're not like live, like. You but me? you still feel it it's really <laughs> wild how you still feel you know like even with this where we're all sort of like playing ourselves you know and sometimes artists will get in they'll be like i'm really nervous and i'm like no 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 casual or it's, it's just, we're just talking you know what i mean yeah, yeah. it's like oh it's very it was it's very you're right it's very strange it's like oh wow i'm excited it was opening night yay no one could be with each other <laughs> we have to do a champagne <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 You gotta do like it, it's very interesting. It's it. I'm. I. I think of it as a blessing, and like I. I love. I love isolation because I love writing, and people don't know that I don't like people too much. So I. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I love just being by my. No, I don't love being. This by is a kind of a fantastic. You know, I just I, died, so I can't. Say I love being by myself, but. <laughs> Well, I, 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 I have to cherish my and then time. It's that many different locations and then yeah, yeah. Yeah, to go to, you know, it's a very important is, I say maybe I have been the bossy. <laughs> I don't know, I didn't mean, but so then it, it, it's a good to know. I, I always very curious to go to the rehearsal, just maybe observing two hours and three hours. That is a really, you know, just maybe almost another theater I'm watching. So when you say, you know, five directors are going to be exchanged to go to how you direct, you know, how you watch it. And that is, now it's happening. We have uh, like five artists, uh, Ryan, include Ryan. Then we are talking about, uh, and then it's so much in information passing and uh, it, it's just, uh, Great. Although I feel I feel it's really lovely and I'll sort of like wrap up on this note, but you know, one thing that live talks keeps coming back to as a theme is that experimental artists, you know, whatever that means to each person, 
the community is sort of built on overcoming obstacles, you know, like we don't have a space, we don't have the equipment, we don't have the money, you know, all these things, and yet still making the performances happen. And it's really been a pleasure to see, especially our resident artists, um, sort of rise to the occasion and be excited by the challenge to perform under these circumstances this year. And it's really been lovely to see work that I haven't seen before because of people who don't live here and, um, uh, I think that it's a real testament to see the community sort of broadcast um, all over the place. So on that note, thank you all so much uh, for joining us today. This was very special to see you all and to have this conversation. Um, and everyone, we're going to be having another live talks later this month where we're going to be checking in with the owners of a few New York venues to see how they're coping in, um, after the first anniversary of the beginning of the pandemic here in New York. Um, and so please tune in for that. And um, thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>